Today, Trinity College Library has announced the acquisition of a very significant body of material related to Samuel Beckett, which has come to us from Professor Stanley E. Gontarski of Tallahassee, Florida. This is a very significant collection of books, of papers, of letters from Beckett to Gontarski. There, there are books about Beckett in many languages. There are many copies of books by Beckett signed or inscribed to Gontarski. There's a series of, of letters between the two of them about theatrical productions, about his work, about a number of other matters. The, the library already has the strongest collection of Beckett correspondence that there is anywhere. What is important in this context is that we're adding to a collection which Beckett himself started. The acquisition has been made possible through the posthumous generosity of two prominent members of college. Firstly, Professor R.V. McDowell, the famous historian, and uh, secondly, my predecessor, William O'Sullivan, who died a number of years ago. This is a significant day in the building of collections for Trinity College Library, in particular in that Beckett is a, is a key element of those collections. And among this collection of Stan Gontarskis, the, the star of the show is probably the manuscripts of Ohio Impromptu, the play which Beckett wrote for him. And uh, th this really is what most scholars, I think, will be coming to study. I was uh, with Beckett as he was rehearsing a uh, production of Endgame in London in 1980. And at one point, uh, I said, you know, Sam, we're doing this pretty big conference uh, to celebrate your 75th anniversary in uh, Ohio. Uh, we're going to have some 500 scholars who are devoting their lives to your, to your work. I mean, it'd be interesting to sort of reverse the birthday process and you send them a gift, some new piece of work, something like that. And that's a, a small a one-act play, which was called uh, at first just the Ohio Project. And somehow, the term Ohio stuck. And it became the Ohio Project, the Ohio Project, and then the Ohio Impromptu. In the long run, however, I'm sure that he had some regret about doing this because Quite clearly, he was bombarded thereafter. Everyone who ran a conference would write and say, uh, can, you, can you do an Austin, Texas uh, impromptu? Can you do a San Francisco impromptu? Can you do a Los Angeles uh, impromptu? And you know, it's, it's not a, a TV uh, serial. Uh, there's a problem with holding things in private hands, and, and that is the general public uh, doesn't have access to it. Um, transferring it to a university that already has a strong collection of Beckett's material where Beckett did his undergraduate and graduate, postgraduate uh, degree, and where uh, a fairly new Samuel Beckett summer school, uh, which has been going since 2011, ensures that a strong number uh, of new generation scholars will be passing through here working on Samuel Beckett's art. So it seemed to me the perfect place uh, for it. Samuel Beckett had a very affectionate relationship with Trinity College. He more or less grew up here. He came here at 17, he was very shy. He discovered modern literature and independence and he never looked back. Um, in 1969, the professor of English, RBD uh, French, wrote to him and said, have you got any manuscript material that you would care to give to the library? Because obviously Trinity was aware that it was time to start collecting modern literature and Beckett was the obvious place to start. Um, and he gave us four manuscript notebooks which have found, formed the foundation of what is a world-class Beckett research collection. One of the reasons that the Trinity collection is so well known and so um, high profile is so much correspondence. We have the correspondence of Thomas McGreevy. Beckett and Thomas McGreevy were very close friends at a time that Beckett didn't realise that everything he ever wrote would be scrutinised by strangers. So he was quite frank, quite open with Thomas McGreevy in a way he never was again. And we also have the correspondence with Barbara Bray. It's very, very valuable for discussing the progress of his work, of Beckett's work, the genesis and the, the creative decisions that went into making his work. Uh, the other um, thing that we have in the collection is the manuscript of the very well-known minimalist work, Imagination Dead, Imagine. So this one notebook is almost a microcosm of the way Beckett worked, the way he translated himself, the word choices that he made. This is fascinating insight to the creative work of, working of a genius. So every time you see a piece of Beckett uh, handwriting come across your desk, you know, 
your <laughs> your archival senses tingle. Um, it's uh, it is one of the world's great collections, and we're very proud of it.